A right around twist. And look at that. That guy is good to go, baby. We're gonna knock down the drag on our pole. Put him in water. Give him a kiss for good luck. Come on. Send him on his way. Welcome to Road Ventures Hawaii, I'm Nick Morris. This is what we do. Like and subscribe, boys. What is up? Good morning, my adventure crew. Nick Morris here. Welcome to another episode. What is up? Good morning, my adventure crew. Nick Morris here. Welcome to another episode of Road Adventures Hawaii. First time here, welcome aboard. If you're coming back, welcome back aboard. Today, we're on the boat and we have, what is that, turtle? I think so. We have Justin with us. Oh, we got a little bit of a turtle hustle going on over here. I'll show you what's going on. Oh, they went underwater. Nope, come here for air. There you go, lights come out too. Okay. We got Justin with us today. There's some turtles doing the, the nasty over here, but they went underwater. I was going to show you that because that was definitely some good content. That is simple. Just catch some fish. All right, everybody, let's go out there and catch some bait, and then from there, we'll see what happens. All right, everybody. This is, this is what we're using for Castle Pedal today. 15 pound fluorocarbon uh, with uh, IG number three hooks. You see there. Tie seven hooks. I got greedy today. Normally I tie six. I got greedy. And then we're gonna use the uh, some firecracker bloodworms from Capanilla Lures. And then his new color, he said that he hasn't come out with yet. I don't know what color it is though. I think it's so much freaking gold in here. This right here will definitely be magic. I think this will be good, but this right here, that's the candy. We'll see though. We'll put one every other one. I'll see which one gets the most bites. Right here though, oh my god. Got him! Okay, we gotta load him up. Big pot on there. If you can, let me know and I'll pop the Ikima. It's the best way to hook them like that. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's Opelu. We'll see. I'll bring it up. Try it. I'll move. Josh, try bring it up. Let's go move. Small pile, but might have a pile. We'll see what happens. All we need is like a dozen. Two dozen would be superb. Small piles. Man, the piles are so hard to find today. You came across two two small piles. I mean, so small. By the time you stop the boat, you, you're drift past the power already. Uh, I don't even see a pile anymore in the recorder. Uh, oh, wait, I got just. I got just. I got, I got, I got. Yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah. Try. Yep, yeah, just, I got. Try to plug it. Oh, so bad. Yeah, both of them. Both the bottom ones. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. Capanilla blood worm. Jump back down, just bit on the gold. Bit on the gold. Try to drop back down. They might be down there still. Cause I didn't see nothing on the corner. Any bit. 
one opelu. It's not even a hard time of year yet, but the piles, the piles, the piles. Gotta find the piles. And I think we should send this guy out long. This is the one we just skirted yesterday. Be my long center, so I'm gonna put him back first. That's gonna be my my furthest lure out. Ah, uh, it's good. It's good. You never ever want to just toss your lures in the water. You never want to just toss them because you just toss them, the hook might get over, might have a bunch of issues, so you never just toss them. And then, like always, I got my lines marked, yeah? I made a video on that, how I did that. It's in my tackle tips. Uh, I'll put a link in the bio if you guys want to see that. But I think it's key, it's going to help save you a lot of time when putting lines out if you have a mark. See my mark? So on this boat, we use rubber bands. We don't use roller trollers. I had bad experience with roller trollers with them breaking, so... Rubber bands. Uh, about eight times. Make sure our rubber band doesn't slide. Come back through, let it go back over. That's it, that rubber band won't slide, we'll put that up. The beauty about using rubber bands, watch this. There we go, it's up right, I don't have to string nothing up, it's up. Let out a little bit more. And we are there, in the spread. All right, now let's do our next long ice blue scoop. One of my favorite lures right there. So since it's a popper, and my two longs are pretty similar in distance, um, not exactly similar, they're staggered. You want them to be staggered, like kind of like that. The one that's a popper, you offer further out because if you put it shorter, it might jump over. All you have to do is always, always check your leaders before you put it out, make sure your hooks are completely straight. You don't want some kind of mess up or something screwed up to cost you a fish of a lifetime, so double check it, double check it. Beautiful. Check your swivel one last time, let it rip. Yeah, I have to take a boat. I have to take a bit, uh, break from the boat fishing because Alicia was about to pop, give birth, and I was like, I can't be on the water. I'll be screwed up. She gives birth, and after she gave birth, she had a C-section. She couldn't drive for a while, so I had to stay home. And after when I could finally go on the boat, the water's been crap. So it's gotta be the first nicest week of the year right there. Should be a mark on this. I'll hold it just like so you feel the mark come out. And let it double back on me. Good, right there. Now make sure it doesn't slip on you. And then for this, it's so simple. Bring a loop, let it go. Close up, turn it out, let the line out. There we go. We have our spread out. Nice. On to the next one. We run the 45 fathom ledge down, the Ono ledge down. I love Ono. It's one of my favorite fish to eat, so hopefully we can get lucky with Ono. Ono sashimi. By far the good stuff. See, when you lay out fast and not pay attention, you can have that happen. You don't want that. There you go. So, wahoo. Slowly, check your leader one last time, let it go. Two days earlier, I'm gonna check it out before you put it on water. Toss it back, let it go. This one doesn't have a mark on it because I know I always put on my short corner, I always put a popper. So the poppers, you wanna put them on front of the wake or right, uh, right on top of the wake or right in front of the wake. So I don't mark this one, I kinda just adjust it by eye. The long is so far back, it's not, it doesn't play as much of a crucial role. They're so far back they're gonna pop anyway. But like I said, the short corner, I wanna adjust it right where it's in front of the way where it's gonna get the most action. It's gonna run the most, I guess the best frantic for me. I thought it was good. Put our drag up, put our clicker on, and now we're fishing, baby. Oh, we forgot the most important thing. Can I pass the most to be just? Huh? Pass the most to be? The most important thing. You know my rules. You gotta feed the sea god. That's automatic. You gotta feed the sea god. He loves Musavis in the morning, I'm telling you. 
Let's give him Musa B. He'll make you happy, make him happy. Alright, everybody, we're fishing. Let's see if we can make something happen. So, we just got our line set up. It's about 8.48, almost the bottom of the low tide. We tried bait, nothing. So slow, no power. We found one little power, we got one Opelu, and that was it. Justin, how many Opelu did you get? Zero. <laughs> I must have snagged that guy. Talk about dog luck. But he bit that gold Campania, that new color. He didn't bite the firecracker, so yeah, one, one and all on that one. So we're actually just gonna troll the 40 fathom ledge, we're gonna hold it down to the point, and from there we're gonna slide out. But today is definitely a, a beautiful day. Like, you can't beat this coastline view. Light winds, come on, blowing 50 to 20 down here. Our first aquapile of the day right now. Small pile birds, but they're working, they're working. Mostly small aquas jumping in the pile. Oh. Okay, it's time to make something happen on light bait. Your light bait needle. Uh, I don't even need a live zips. I ran out. I go buy some more. Um, uh, just 25 pound test with a, a lay making needle. That's all you need. No, hopefully everybody's still alive. Oh, he is. He's right there. Perfect. There you go. So I'm into the net. He wants to be with us. He wants to be right there in the net. So we're home upside down. We're going to sit down and cut mellows them out. And we'll go right in front of the eyes. Right between the eyes like that. We may not catch anything today, but you know what? We're all going to learn something. Show you guys how to bite a pet loop. So I hook that loop. I'm going to spin it. Like so. I'm going to go right back through the loop from that front side. And right around twist. And look at that. That guy is good to go, baby. I'm going to knock down the drag on our pole. Put him in water, give him a kiss for good luck, come on, and send him on his way. And we're going to send him on his way. There he goes, walking the dog, walking the dog. There he goes. We're going to send him pretty far back. And this is typically the best way I like to lie beat Opelu. I don't think there's any other way around it, you know what I mean? This is pretty the only way to lie beat Opelu. But this is how I do it. I'm sure there's a couple other techniques, but the way I was kind of taught by my dad, so I'm gonna send him back, send him back, send him back, send him back, send him back. And back kind of far distance, kind of far distance. Oh, backlash, little backlash. Look at that, sparkly, sparkly. I gotta have my daughter redo it again. That's my lucky charm, I think. Let's send him back about 60 yards, maybe 70 yards. Get him enough back where he's not bouncing the boat when it lunges. Okay, now next, step number two. I like to use file rubber bands because they're really, really stretchy. So no Pelu's running or something's chasing it, you, already, you have an idea what's going on because you can see his file rubber band going to town. Scroll right enough so it doesn't slide. It's like eight, 10 times like the other one. Now when you pull it down, it's gonna go back over. Put it through the hole, and that should not come off. It should not come loose, it'll snap. We're gonna back up here at Outrigger also. And then that's pretty much it. And then we're gonna put some drop back on here. Drop back is if a fish bites it, it'll gain enough time to swallow it. And that's the whole reason for drop back. The fish bites it, it'll give it the time it needs to kind of swallow it. I'm going to give it about a 15 foot loop of drop back. The eyes, the sheep is when they bite it, it'll break and it'll smoke line right away. The marlins will break and I'll play with it for a while before they swallow it. It's good. Let's go watch the rubber band. Rubber band's tight. Rubber band's tight. It's going to go just. Hopefully it's not a rusty dude. What is it? It's back there. Hopefully it's not a barracuda. 
barracuda is tight but it's not swallowing it. Or rubber band is stretched right now. Something has it but it's not breaking the rubber band down. And I can feel weight on it. Maybe be a small mine might be. Alright, there's something on there. Never happens like this. Never happens like this. Never then. Let it go and see what happens. It's probably a barracuda, Justin. Bring it in. I don't know what it is. Try bring it in, Just. Just take your time, bring it. Turn off the clicker, turn off the clicker. There's something on there, though. Huh? Right, bring it in. Maybe a barracuda. Huh? Not big, yeah? Huh? Is it still on there? Keep reeling, keep reeling. Our one old pillar, this is how you see the white wash there. Hopefully. Something on there, huh? Wait. Oh yeah, let go. If it's gonna go, let it go. Go, just go. What is it? Go bring it in. Hey. Huh? Oh, that's a big barracuda. Yeah, we'll kill him. Got him. No way, was today, baby. Got the bat, just. That's a big barracuda. No way wash today. They're slimy. They're really slimy, but they're good eating. These are deep water barracuda. This isn't reef barracuda. So you know what? No way wash today. We'll take this guy home and we'll eat it. These are last. These are last and only bait right there. So unfortunately. That was our only bait. Big barracuda. That's 12 pounds, maybe bigger. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut his gills. You got nice meat. Cut that blood, get all the blood out of him. Look at those teeth, oh my god. Yeah, these are really good to eat, but a lot of people don't eat them because of the sliminess of them. But they're super good to eat. We'll show you some good barracuda shishin with this guy for sure. Our one bait did not go to waste. Okay, we're back at home. It's the next day. The fish has iced pretty good. It's covered in ice. I just uncovered it. Uh, the way the property take care of the fish is lots of ice. So it should be pretty stiff. And it is. Look how stiff the guy is. Look. Oh, here we go. So let's cut this guy up and get him ready for dinner tonight. Pretty much just cut him like any other fish. Take off the head first. That didn't work out, did it? Take out the head first. It's under belly cut, we'll cut right there. Get that out of way. Uh, and what you probably will notice when you do this fish is there should be little to no blood at all. Because with all fish that we catch, doesn't matter what it is, we always bleed the fish. Always, always, always bleed the fish. That's the key. You know, good meat, bleed your fish. Let me show you, take extra good care of bleeding the fish. That's a 110% all time. So, we'll pull the head out. This head will go in the bucket. Hey, look who's here. Nobody can see you, it's too far away. Look who's here, fast forward. <laughs> here, hold here, Jesse, give me my camera, man. And there's a filet. Not too bad, not too shabby. Skillage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this the Dexter knife, fillet knife, look at this thing. Flexible. It's gonna make it easier to get the skin off. 
Vedo. Non lo so, Leo. Alright, so we got it all filleted up. And uh, I guess let's go now and let's cook it. We'll figure out some way to cook it. Alright, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the blood meat from the center. We'll cut on uh, both sides, take out the blood meat. We're going to trash this piece. We don't need that. We're going to use some cornstarch, put it in a bag. And the reason we use cornstarch is it makes it crunchy versus using flour, which will kind of make it battery. Throw it all in the bag. And we'll get some shake and bake, some egg whites to uh, dip it with, and some Lay's potato chips. This is the secret ingredient. Put it in a bag, crunch it with a spoon. Makes it super, super easy for sure. Crunch it up, crunch it up, crunch it up. And then from there, the next step is you're pretty much just going to take your cornstarch fish. You're going to egg wash it. That's just straight egg whites, two egg whites. And we're going to dip it in the, the, the chip crumbs. And that's pretty much just going to be our batter, our mix right there. We didn't salt or pepper it because the chips already are naturally salty, right? And the pepper, all it's going to do is change the taste. So we don't want pepper on there. And trust me, it has more than enough salt. It comes out just right with it. Um salted like the way it is so we're just going to keep repeating the process of doing all of these pieces until we get them all done i thought i had enough chips i have to and actually end up making more chips <laughs> to get it all done but i tell you what once you do it this way this will definitely be your favorite way to fry fish i think it's even better than panko that's how good this way is as you can see we're going to keep going until we get to the last of it which is right about here it's the last piece so let's get outside and let's fry it up so all we're gonna do is we're gonna add some vegetable oil to this and for after we add the vegetable oil we just have to wait for it to come up the temp that's probably the, the longest process of this whole thing when you're cooking it uh, I use a laser temp gauge to help me I guess better judge what the temp's at and what I'm shooting for is about 360 degrees to me that's probably the optimal temperature to throw your fish in it'll cool down a little bit sooner you throw a fish in but uh, it should roughly bounce back to where you want it to be Temp is there, so it's time to drop our fish in. And with this type of uh, fish and cooked like this, and the you know the size in, I think they're about you know one and a half inch by one and a half inch uh, fish sticks. Uh, so with this size, it only takes about a minute and a half on each side, roughly, give or take. And you saw we're frying at about 360 degrees. So put them all in there. You want to make sure they're not touching you first for me, because they will stick together, which will suck. So we'll put them in there. And then we just gotta wait about a minute and a half. And then once the minute and a half comes, we're gonna flip it. As you can see here, we're doing our first flip on it. And pretty much we're just gonna give it another minute and a half until it's ready to come out. So this is our first batch all done up. And look how golden it is. And it's so crispy, it's super, super good. And this is our last batch. That's my version of fish sticks. The barracuda that we caught, super simple recipe. And you know what? It, I, I tried one already to sample it, and it's super, super moist. I think because of the way we did the egg washing, it keeps all that moisture in. So let's go in the house and let's feed it to Damien. So here's the ultimate taste test. We have to let Damien try. He's the ultimate taste tester. Yeah? Try a piece. No, over here, these pieces are cool. The other pieces are hot. Any okay. one of those pieces. So what do you think, Damien? It's very crunchy and it's very meaty. Some of you guys could cook this. Stay tuned. Now my dad could do it. <laughs> Is it good though? <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> but what if it would taste with macadamia? Are you eating macadamia? That's why you eat it? No. <laughs> it tastes even better. So what I forgot, what I found, what goes perfect with this, is this sweet Thai chili sauce. Oh my God. Let's put some in a bowl. What did you say about this chili sauce? Uh, it tastes very good. You should try this at home. Bye. <laughs> <coughs> oh my God. I got to try with the sweet chili sauce. Oh my God. He's going to oh. taste it. That is my new favorite heat fish now. Super crunchy, super moist. And I didn't season the fish with salt or pepper. And the reason being was I was like, the potato chips have enough salt in it. So I didn't think you needed to salt it. And you know, there's more than enough salt there. It's perfect. It's literally perfect. 
that good. Can I have just a little? Back to the boat to close this out. Alright everybody, time to go and watch the boat. Not a good day trolling, kind of slow. Uh, we turned, at least we turned our live bait into something edible. Uh, uh, barracuda, from our old Pelotier Barracuda, so you can't complain about that. But thanks for watching everybody. And don't forget, on March 7th is our meetup. I'll link that video right here if you don't watch it. Watch that video, see where we're going March 7th on Oahu. But thanks for watching. As always, tight lines, stay fishing, and we'll see you on the water. Hello everyone. Now it's time to go watch the boat. Good times, good times.